Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Polymer Clay Tutor. In today's PCT product demo, I'm going to review the product PV Clay. And it is a polymer clay that is manufactured in Brazil. And um, you may, if you've been around for a while, you may know it as uh, Bozzy Clay. It used to be um, manufactured under this name and now the, the packaging has changed. I think the formula has changed just slightly as well. And um, in a previous video, I did show you um, the Bozzy um, flexible clay blade. Uh, they also have now with the the new brand they have the same blade in um, the PV clay blade and this is the blade that is um, flexible but it also is a safety blade you can't cut yourself with it or at least you'd have to try really hard but it cuts through clay really nicely so um, you can check that out at the PV clay site as well but I'm going to show you a little bit about the clay because it's a it's different than um, some of the clays that you may be familiar with I'll first talk about the packaging and a little bit about the clay, then I'll talk a little bit about um, the color shifts uh, between raw and baked, and then I'll also just show you a, a few little samples and um, show you the strength and stuff of it. Now, first of all, as far as the packaging goes, this is um, what the block of clay looks like. Uh, it is about exactly the same weight and size as a um, block of Fimo clay. And in fact, the, uh, the way it looks inside is pretty similar. It is, the packaging itself is really kind of unique. It's the, um, a reusable package. Uh, this is a paper outside with a bit of a plastic lining on the inside. So you, it um, is protected from the clay. And then when you slide it out of the package, it has this um, thin plastic coating that you just, uh, you can leave on the clay and just cut your piece off. And then you can wrap it right back up. It just easily wraps back up and then you can slide it right back into the package, which is quite a nice little feature. Um, and the, this clay itself, it bakes at 265 Fahrenheit or 130 um, Celsius and the recommended time is 30 minutes. That's what I've baked all of these at and whenever you try a new clay you should always do it at the uh, recommended temperature and time that the package says. And then if there's any tweaking um, as far as time goes you can do that later. Now the clay is really interesting. Um, it has a bit, it feels quite firm when you get it, first cut it, but when you start working it, this piece I've worked a little earlier, it gets really, really soft. Now it's not a mushy kind of soft like some of the clays like uh, Craft Smart or um, one of those clays. It is um, just a, a softer version, a little bit more like Pardo clay if you've ever used that. It seems to me like it might be more wax based than some of the other clays. It also is kind of sticky. So I find that the, the surface itself is quite sticky, um, once, especially when it starts getting really warm or if it's, um, you know, you've been working with it quite a bit. The, the other really interesting thing about it is that it is, it is the smell. Now, some clays, they smell they have a really faint smell. Some smell like plastic. Some have a really strong smell like Cato Poly clay, for example, has a strong vinyl kind of smell to it. But this clay, it smells, it, for me, it smells exactly like those little decorative flower soaps that my grandma used to put in her guest bathroom and then she never let us use them. They have, it smells like flowers and soap, if you can <laughs> imagine that smell. And I actually really like it. It's the, the only clay that I've ever been around where I actually really like the smell of the clay. Um, so that is interesting about it. Uh, there are, what other things about it? He, it comes in lots and lots of colors. These are the colors that uh, Eden Ho sent me. He's the manufacturer. And I've known him just basically online for um, a while now. Um, and he sent me just a small sampling of their colors and they have, uh, from what I can tell on the website, they have 43 different colors. They range in, you know, your regular um, solid colors as well as metallics and translucents 
even some really bright fluorescent colors and a glow in the dark. Um, they are, most of the colors more based along the lines of artist um, based colors. Uh, you can see that um, being from Brazil, they have, the packaging is all in, um, in Portuguese. That is the language that they speak there. Um, Tangerina is probably the only one of the color names that I can actually pronounce. <laughs> Some of them are very difficult. I'm not very familiar with Portuguese, so that my pronunciation would be atrocious if I tried to pronounce all of these names. So when I rolled them out here, um, I just wrote down the names and the numbers if you wanted to know what they were. Now I've got the, these samples baked out. I've got the uh, row of raw and a row of baked chips here. Same with here, this one's a uh, row of raw clay and this is baked clay. And you can see with the comparison side by side that there is almost zero color shift between the raw clay and the baked clay. The only one that I can see any difference at all with um, the colors is a, just a tiny bit darkening on the white. Um, and then uh, I don't see any darkening in any of these colors here. Uh, any of these yellows, the greens. He didn't send me any blues, but I know they have lots of blues and things like that. And then in here, I didn't see any color shift at all. This here is um, the color Bronco Translucido, <laughs> something like that. So it's their white translucent. You can see there is a color shift here, and that's pretty common with most of the translucents. Um, this is a fairly thick piece of translucent clay. Um, it's rolled out at a number four on my Atlas Pass machine, which is about three playing cards thick. One of the things you can see here is that there is a fair amount of um, what they call placking. And so there's these kind of moon shaped um, little flecks in the clay. That happens uh, with a lot of brands. Some are really um, do it a lot and some brands don't. It happens if when air gets trapped in there or moisture. Um, it can have a really cool effect if you're doing a lot of faux stones and that kind of thing. You can try to avoid it but it's it's fairly common. Now here is a really thin piece of the same white translucent and I'll show, show you up here so that you can see a little bit better. You can see that now I rolled it at the thinnest setting on my pasta machine and then just stretched it as far as I could get it. So it's just like really, really, really thin. Um, thinner than paper probably. And you can see it has kind of a frosted look to it. It's not super translucent or clear, but if you hold it up against something like some printing like this, you can see that you can see through it really quite well. So you can do a lot of the, um, it would work great as a background uh, for, you know, flower canes, any of the uh, techniques where you have a really thin uh, protective layer of translucence over top, it would work quite well. Now uh, to compare a thicker sheet here of the translucent, you can still see through it, but the thicker it gets, the more um, frosted it kind of gets, especially if there's a lot of mooning and that kind of thing in there. Now I've also got just a sample here I wanted to test um, to see what its flexibility and strength is. As you can see obviously with this really really thin piece it's very very flexible and with this piece here it's about three playing cards thick. Let's just test it out to see its strength. It looks very flexible and not brittle even baked for only the half an hour. Let's see if I can actually force it to break. Um, well, not very easily. So this looks, it's a very strong clay. <laughs> and I can't break it. So even at the baked for the half an hour, it is a very strong, flexible clay. Now when it's baked into um, like a cabochon like this and much thicker, you can see that it is quite hard. So, um, it's really going to work for a lot of your applications, whether you want to use it for something um, thin or thick. Now this piece here, um, I just fooled around for a little bit. I haven't had a chance to do make much with this clay yet, but I did make like a little tiny uh, miniature cane with it. 
uh, kind of a really fine line kind of string art style cane and you can see that it worked quite well for the caning and then um, I just put it together in a couple sheets that I laminated or not laminated but you know put side by side this piece here was sanded and buffed and you can see there's no wax or anything on it so it's got a it can um, polish up to a very high shine which is really nice to see the um, back side which is unfinished by the way um, you can see I didn't do anything or sand it or do anything to it at all and it is quite matte when it's baked so that is interesting um, what else can I tell you about it oh the the um, they have metallics and uh, that seem to have a lot of uh, mica colors in the mica powders in them so that you could do a lot of the um, mica shift techniques and that type of thing um, he has tons and tons of colors and all kinds of different things. Now, his website is uh, pvclay.com.br for Brazil. And the prices seem to be really good. Now, I, I haven't bought anything for Brazil. He sent these samples to me. And, but, and so I don't know about his uh, shipping and all that. But the... For, and the pricing seems to be a little bit different depending on the colors and that's really common if you're buying um, like art supplies such as um, oil paints or acrylic expensive acrylic paints they can um, the price will sometimes vary according to the color and I see that he's done that too but for a solid regular color it is um, six I don't know if you pronounce it real or real or however you pronounce it, but the currency in Brazil is uh, R E A L, <laughs> and there's it's six of those, and they're um, if you divide it by four is what it would cost you in American dollars. So it basically is about a dollar fifty for um, most of the colors, and then it goes up to eight real or 825 or something for some of the other colors with the metallic and that type of thing. So the prices are really quite cheap for the, the size. Um, I think for a lot of you um, international people that have, um, that America might be too far for you to, to order products from, I think this is a very versatile clay. It, it's a little, the properties of it are a little bit different than some of the other ones that are out there but it it looks to, to polish up nice it's hard it's flexible it's strong it comes in tons of colors I haven't done a ton of color mixing but um, I did just sort of blend them together and they seem to blend together really quite nice um, the translucent is very workable as far as uh, its translucency and the smell is <laughs> really great I just love it so make sure to check out um, PV Clay. They also have a Facebook page at PV Clay Polym um, Poly PV Clay Polymer Clay on Facebook. So you can check them out there and uh, see what you think. All right. So I hope that was helpful for you and that you learned something new about this interesting clay. And um, if you have a product that you would like me to test and you'd like to learn more about it, uh, leave me a suggestion in the comment section below. If you have techniques that you would like to learn about, and you should make sure to check through, do a search through all of our videos. We have done tons and tons of them, and it's a pretty good chance that we've already answered your question. But if not, you could uh, leave another uh, suggestion in the comment section below as well. So we will see you next time, and bye for now.